Despite the claims of critics, uh, God is not dead. Even though there is little disagreement that the forces of modernization have de-churched God and diminished uh, the hold of Christianity and its political leverage, there is this growing consciousness that, that God has not completely disappeared from the public domain, and it seems that he's not likely to in the near future. Secularization has not, a managed, uh, has not managed to eliminate God from our minds or even evict God from the public sphere. In fact, evidence seems to suggest that God is making something of a public recovery and public return. Religion is getting a public rehearing and a public revaluing. Angelic Exchanges, speaking of God in the public sphere, the latest think piece of the Social Policy and Parliamentary Unit, explores how the Salvation Army can engage with this new public and its newer questions. Does our engagement in the public domain mean we have to speak with a new, more openly public language? Do we have to translate our distinctive salvationism into a new vocabulary, into new words that a desecularized public might potentially revalue and revisit? Big questions. The Salvation Army has a long history of public engagement and innovative uh, missional translation. We were in the descriptive imagery of Catherine and William Booth, our founders. We were born uh, in the open air. We were born on the streets. Uh, a description of our start that makes me think of um, the opening credits of Rowan Atkinson, where he is literally dropped onto the streets out of mid-air. Insane, a more contemporary history of the Salvation Army claims that we were born of the back streets. Um, a slightly different uh, description of our start that I think speaks even more clearly of our commitment, of our earliest commitment to public translation, to being something, to being a movement of the people, for the people and with the people. The daring Catherine Booth, she would say from the get-go to um, Salvationists when they were going public, she would say this, adapt your measures to the necessity of the people to whom you minister. You are to take the gospel to them in such modes and habitudes of thought and expression and circumstances as will gain for it from them a hearing. Somewhat controversially, Major Jeff Ryan from the 614 Network in Canada claims that our earliest expressions of public engagement looked and sounded like a prophetic joking of a court jester. We were the serious joke of God. We were ridiculed in the public sphere, but we were also ridiculing of the public domain. And we ridiculed a public domain that it had limited itself um, to what it thought had always been and had to always be. And Major Ryan says this, The Salvation Army is nothing if not a profound mystery and one of the Lord's sublimest jokes on a rather humorless world. We make much of the idea that historically the Salvation Army suited the times in which it was created. The British Empire was at its zenith, militarism was in vogue, brass bands were all the rage, and war was an integral part of public life. I contend that, says Major Ryan, in reality things were nothing like what we imagined they were in the beginning. We were no more relevant then as a form of Christian church than we are today. Now acting like this public gesture, uh, gesturing, the early Salvationists, they simply didn't speak of that which could not be spoken. They simply didn't speak of the indescribable or the unutterable to the people in power. They had a language about them that, that allowed them to see and do something new, something different. They converted their language into campaigns against the drinking industry, um, dehumanization and objectification of women, gender inequity, joblessness, public health issues, crime, prison policy, education, uh, indebtedness, homelessness, poverty, inhumane uh, labor conditions, um, the legal age of sexual consent and, and even in inequitable trade. The Salvation Army had discovered from its start that within the foolishness of the cross, if you like, and within its uh, public-like, uh, jester-like public witness and public worship, they had discovered a rich treasury of words with which they could redescribe others, redescribe the world in which they were living in. Is that how you see the Salvation Army today? Angelic Exchanges um, is a discussion sta starter that we, we hope that you'll enter into. It is a little complex and at times it goes deep and it's somewhat stretching. Most importantly, though, it is a serious attempt to engage with some pretty big questions that the Salvation Army now faces. Our humble prayer is that it will help to continue um, the strength of our public witness and our public worship and might potentially lead to what Walter Brueggemann calls a redescription or a re-narration of our world, that we would learn once more to tell a different story.